Welcome back to our introductory statistics series. I'm Mark Ledbetter and this is lecture video 29 part B and we are still in section 8.1 part 8. This is the final part and we've been reviewing how to um, or learning how to estimate mu when sigma is known and we've been talking about how to determine sample size for a new study. And so we're going to finish that section today. And again, this is a pre-recorded video, so I hope you enjoy the slower pace. So let's get started. For the sample size, we always round up, not rounding, but round up to the next whole number. always. So even though this is less than 5, um, less than 0.5, we're still going to round up. It doesn't matter what this decimal is. If it were 61.00001, I would still r go up to the next whole number. Why? Well, to answer that question, I have to go back to the formula for E. Okay. So, for E, if I plug in, um, if I plug in 61, so I've got 1.96, let's say, and I've got 2, and I divide by um, the square root of 61, then I get an error that is greater than 0.5. So I get 1.96 times 2 divided by square root of 61, and that gives me a 0 0.5019. So that's bigger than the maximum E. So um, remember that the requirement is that th this value of E is the maximum that I can uh, take. It's the maximum amount of error that I'm willing to accept. All right. So this would give me bigger than that. Now, if I take in 1.96 uh, times 2 divided by the square root of 62, I get 0.4978. Um, which is less than 0.5, and that is okay. So remember that I'm looking for the minimum sample size to achieve the confidence level I want, and that confidence level is determined by z sub c uh, for the maximum amount of error that I'm willing to accept, e, and my formula, if you remember, my formula is right here, okay? And so, with this, uh, E and E takes care of the precision, Z sub C takes care of the confidence level, okay? All right. So, we always round up. That's what you need to remember. Now, once I've been given a confidence interval, I can find E, even though E is not given to me, I can figure it out because we go back to the formula for the confidence interval and we see that the lower number is X minus E, X bar minus E, excuse me. Notice that X bar is in the middle. And then the upper limit for the uh, confidence interval, U, that's, so this is the lower, this is the upper. And so notice that since I'm taking x bar and subtracting e, the difference between L and x bar, that difference is e. Because if I subtract those two, I get e. Now distance is always positive. So um, whether you take x bar minus e minus x bar, or whether you take x bar minus x bar, uh, minus E, you'll either get negative E or positive E, um, and the distance is always going to be positive. Also note that E is always 
positive. So make sure that uh, if you get the negative value, take a take the positive of it. So if you if you choose the wrong critical value, you choose the negative instead of the positive, um, then you're going to get a negative e. You don't want that. Make sure that it's positive. Okay. Or if you get a negative and you don't know how to fix it, at least write on your paper. I know this is wrong. I didn't have time to correct it or figure out why. Now also, the distance here between you and x bar, that distance is also e. So how far is it from l to u? Well, u minus l is going to be x bar plus e minus, use your parentheses, x bar minus e. And so this is equal to x bar plus e minus x bar plus e. So the x bars cancel out, but it gives me 2e, which is exactly what I see here. It's e plus e. Okay. So in order to get e, this is your formula. You take the bigger number minus the smaller number in the confidence interval, divide by 2. So let's do that here. Now, uh, so e is going to be u minus l divided by 2, which is 70 minus 50 divided by 2, which is 20 divided by 2, which is 10. So e is 10. Quite easy to get this. All right, so this will be an easy question for you to answer on the test. Just make sure that you use the right formula because the formula I'm about to show you is very similar except for the plus sign versus the minus sign. So the other thing that I can do with the confidence interval is I can figure out what x bar is. So again, if we draw our picture for um, x for the confidence interval, so this is going to be my confidence interval from the lower value, x bar minus e, to the upper value, x bar plus e. Notice the x bar is right in the middle. It's always in the middle. Okay, always. It is always in the middle of the CI. So if it's in the middle, we get the mid midpoint by averaging. So we're going to average L plus U divided by 2. That's the average of L and U. So let's do an example. I want to find X bar if the confidence interval is 1.5 to 2.5. Well, we can just easily look at this and see that 2.0 is in the middle. And so X bar is going to be equal to 2. But let's do the work just to see. So I take u plus l divided by 2, and that's going to be 1.5 plus 2.5 divided by 2, which is 4 over 2, which is 2. So this is equal to x bar. And But what if it's a little bit messier? What if we need... Uh, to find this, then we'd have 1.028 plus 3.753 divided by 2. And I don't know about you, but I need to use my calculator, which gives me 4.781 divided by 2, which is 2.3905. So x bar is equal to 2.39. Zero 0.5. So you should now be able to do all the homework for section 8.1. So I will see you or talk to you in the next video. Well, that's the end of this video. So please remember to scan your lecture notes before midnight of the day on the course calendar. Uh, if you have questions, by all means, please come to virtual office hours. I am happy to help you. And if you can't do that, then, then by all means, email me. But when you email me, please email me a picture of both the problem, because I may not have access to that problem wherever I am, 
and a picture of your work, which allows me to know uh, how you're approaching the problem and help you best and the quickest. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Until then, stay safe and take care.